Ladies and gentlemen, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland uh, Select Board of Awesome. We're scheduled uh, for about 6.30, which is about seven minutes ago, but frankly, we were talking school stuff in the best possible ways. I'd start the night. Uh, with two things. The first is, thanks everybody who worked to get the Southern Riverside Park up and running. Oh. We got proclamations from both the Senate and the House. They're down here to read. Thank you for uh, Representative Blay to come out and help cut bittersweet and then commit to cutting bittersweet every single day <laughs> she's along the riverbank. <laughs> along with everybody else who sees bittersweet, please cut the bittersweet because it's miserable. It's worse than old politicians, just miserable. It's a scourge. It's the scourge. And don't forget the knotweed, because it looks nice, and then it's nine feet tall and you can't see anything. Yeah. So, to Pathways Committee, to town meeting. I don't think town meeting gets thanked enough. That's a legislative body for all that work. Come down, walk by the river. Tonight we've got Peter Guerin talk to us about school committee, school committee updates. Uh, we've got some select board updates. We've got a missing member, hopefully enjoying some time with family, and that's a good thing. We're going to discontinue stuff and maybe continue stuff, which is always kind of interesting. I'm going to take a personal moment and wish my dad a happy 75th birthday. That's a guy who uh, started in a tough space and is dealing with a tough disease. Okay, Peter, what do you got? Well, I hope I have my sympathy for your dad. No, you he's, know. he's, yeah. He got me by three months, you know. I know. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's whatever. Don't, yeah. be in any, don't be in any hurry to get this. It's all good. Okay. Um, I wanted to come in and uh, update you on uh, some stuff with school choice, uh, school choice and the, and the uh, numbers involved with that uh, were a major part of our budget discussions over the winter and um, I, it's actually these numbers, are, by numbers I mean they're numbers coming in and numbers going out, you know, students, students choosing to attend Sunderland who live in other towns and Fortunately, a, a good bit smaller number who live in Sunderland choosing to go to school in a different town. Um, and for all you, when you put together a budget, you make all sorts of assumptions, and some of them you can make pretty well, but some of them, man, you just have to wait around till the end of the year and see what the actual numbers are. Right. And that's the case with school choice because uh, you, you can. You know, you can look at the history, you can look at how you're doing so far, but it's not really until you get to the end of the year and you get the actual numbers that uh, uh, you know what's happened. Uh, in this case, what we have, uh, we have the final numbers, but I'll put final in quotation marks because this is stuff that's all been reported to the state by all the towns this spring as to where we are, but it is still possible that there will be corrections made or that one town will object to what another town is reported and so, you know, there's still a provision for correcting this, but this is pretty close to the final stuff, and it may actually be the final stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, where we are here, there are, again, like I said, there are two parts. There's the outgoing, right. and the outgoing uh, we pay for by getting a charge on the cherry sheet. Uh, and uh, throughout the year, the state makes its state aid payments to the town once every month. Okay. And so, you know, the last one, the June one at the end of June, basically catches up on these school choice uh, cumulative changes over the year. So that in this case, we have uh, the numbers for uh, what we have to pay for outgoing and what we get as revenue for incoming. Uh, they both changed. They've both gone up. Fortunately, the incoming has gone up a fair bit more than the outgoing. Uh, the specific numbers are our outgoing uh, cost, it's a charge or an expense, is up 30,000 than what was expected as of uh, the 
last state pronouncement back last December. Right? The incoming number is up about 60,000. Okay, and so while the first one is not good, the second one is good. Um, explanation. The, well, first of all, I'll say, I, again, we're still double checking the data. And one thing in my conversations with uh, Darius, the superintendent, uh, I talked to him a bunch last week about this, was, you know, are we making, actually, have we talked to the last two school committees about this? school committee meetings is, are we double checking these numbers? Okay, just because the state says this, you know, are we making sure that we agree with it? And so uh, between Darius and other members of administrative team, they've been putting a fair bit of effort into checking, again, both on the ones that we're paying for, mm -hmm. the outgoing ones, and also, you know, to make sure that those are legitimate charges to us, and also the uh, incoming ones to make sure that we're getting credit for all the ones we have. Okay. And, you know, the one thing I saw, you know, immediately I saw, well, we got a $30,000 increase in what we're being charged. That's one student. Okay. And you say, well, why'd that happen? Why didn't we know about it? Okay. And there the situation is, that was a student that, as of the start of the school year, was not living in uh, Sunderland. Okay. Was going to school in a, in a neighboring town. Uh, was not living in Sunderland as of the 1st of October when the reports are filed, you know, for the state for how things stand for the year, and moved into Sunderland, the family moved into Sunderland, like in the, you know, first part of October. Uh, the student stayed at the school the student was at, so all of a sudden we got a school choice outbound, right. okay, with a substantial spec cost. One of, you know, so my immediate questions were, is this right? The answer was, yeah, it seems to be right. I mean, they're still checking, but it seems like it's right. And is this gonna be a problem for the next year? And there at least the news was good because this was a sixth grade student. Okay. Okay. So that so, uh, it's not gonna at least hit the elementary school next year. Uh, yeah, a lot of these people, you know, you're never sure where somebody's gonna be living, right. but at least it's no longer gonna be an elementary school issue. And if it is a frontier issue, then at least that's split between the four towns. Right. That okay, sense. so that's, and it's within their own budget pool. So that's, you know, that's on the outgoing side. On the incoming side, the number's up 60,000. And that's, you know, in a couple of cases, it was like, same thing. We got, we got people that were here all year at the school, but we didn't know that the family had moved out, you know, early in the year. And, and you know, the way Darius says is there's a reluctance often for people to say, hey, we've moved because <coughs> they don't want to keep their kid in the school. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. And he says, Amherst, for example, you move out of town, <clears throat> you know, your kid, you know, sorry, your kid's got to go to school where you moved. Sunderland or Frontier as a whole, the, the, the policy is you start the year in town, you finish the year in town. Okay. And he says sometimes they need, maybe they need to do a better word, better job of getting that word out because, you know, once they've started in the school, they're not going to kick them out. Okay. And obviously it's our benefit to keep them because it's school choice money coming in. Smart. But, um, so that's the situation, okay? It's, um, you know, it's also clear these numbers fluctuate. Sure. Okay, and that was part of our discussion uh, throughout the budget process of wanting to um, plan for ending next year with a cushion. We couldn't afford to with this year, even though now it seems perhaps we have a bit of a cushion. Well, I think if I could, Peter, it was the, the current or the contracted business manager uh, who was providing some of those numbers that were that drove us to where we were in the spring? And she was the one, uh, Judy. Yeah, Dr. Judy. Yeah. She was the one that spoke most forcefully to the need mm -hmm. for having a cushion yep. at, because of the fluctuation that just happens right. with these numbers. Right. Okay. Right. And in you know the sheet I gave you there, I'm not going to talk here about town by town. Right. Right. Things change. Right. People move, and Sunderland. You know, number one, we're, you know, with the university around, we're more transient because right. of that. Number two, because of the apartments, mm -hmm. you know, that's also you know, a, a, another reason that things change. And they change in your favor sometimes, and they change uh, in your disfavor sometimes. Right. Okay. But, but Dr. Hull was, you know, very uh, forthright in saying, no, you got to, you got to, plan your budget so at least at the end of the coming year, FY20, mm -hmm. 
you have a cushion. Right. Now, that's what we did. We did it with your all agreement, you know, understanding, then agreement, then support, same as the Finance Committee. And, you know, I look back on those decisions and I think, you know, does this change, you know, the validity of any of those decisions? I say, not at all. I says we did exactly the right thing. Right. Okay. Now, we still have to, you know, keep an eye on this thing. I mean, you know, it's sort of like now I've learned where to find the data on the state websites, right. you know, I've learned, you know, where you see what monthly figures they're depositing in our bank account. You know, it's, it's just a lot better situation in terms of what we know when we know it, okay? So that'll help, but they're still gonna be bouncing around. Right. So that all we can do, you know, what I'd like to, um, you know, what we got coming up for points at which data will become available is, you know, we'll have numbers on, you know, over the summer who is enrolling, you know, in through school choice for starting the year. And then, you know, on the first day of school or the first week of school, who actually shows up, right. you know, or who has actually disappeared because right. plans change. Sure. Okay. There's an October shift by the state calculation too, right? Then what happens is we have to report October will all sorts of data as of October 1, okay? And that report's due by the end of October, but like this last year with a change in the financial operation, I think they, they, they applied for and got like a 30-day extension to do it so that I think a lot of the reports don't get in until like late November, right. mm -hmm. and then the state is, puts out a new like database of the numbers in December, and that's what you use for budgeting. Mm -hmm. But I look at that and I think that's all the good, all good to keep track of. Yeah. But it's still the actuals to count. Right. Right. Okay. Because yeah. you can suddenly say, okay, we, you know, we're projected higher and so on. That's real nice. You hope that's the case. But that doesn't mean you just go out and spend it. Right. right. Because you okay. need to know what your actuals. Because are you don't know what your actuals are going to be, and you know, like you can see right here, this stuff bounces around. Sure. Okay. It's so you know, all I can say is that what I hope to do with this is just a continuation of um, you know, what we're here doing tonight, which is, you know, stay informed, keep talking about it, because at some point we're going to have to, I want to go through, you've got ideas about, I think you've got better ideas of more knowledge, I know you've got more knowledge than I do, about how you make decisions about how much of a cushion to have, how much to, you know, how much to spend, what to spend it on, you know, what kinds of things to spend it on, all this sort of stuff, you know, I, I'm expecting will be part of the whole long budget discussion sure. that will, um, you know, take, you know, it obviously takes place at our committees, but also with your guys' involvement just as much. Uh, actually, along those lines, if I could, David? Yeah. Uh, one question that popped up, I know it's only, a, it, it, it's, it seems like town meeting was so, you know, last year, but <laughs> it was not last year. We're only now, uh, well, the 15th, this is it. Our, our town books officially close, right? right? We're done. Right. So the, the, the books are done, and this is officially no more transfers, no more catching up, no more anything. So right. July 1st, uh, we're in that new budget appropriation, that budget process. And with the amount of um, energy and effort that was put together by uh, the school community and the larger community for... Uh, sustainable budget that was what, what was pitched right we're on a sustainable right. budget right. so what happens uh, now are some of those policy discussions so we can talk about choice and I appreciate the, both the update but also the fact that it's a moving target I completely understand right. the October piece right. the question I would I would pose to the committee and I'll go to a future meeting is how is the uh, internal workings of the administration of the committee uh, how are they working toward an effective use of choice so that we're not a decade forward going, we need another reset, I, right? Whether uh, they're, whether all I can say is it's sure going to stay on the agenda. Yeah, yeah totally, I completely understand that. You know, because it's like, and to me, it's, it's not an easy nut to crack. No, I agree. It's dynamic. It's really it's different. It's very dynamic. And the, yeah. more, you know, and the moment you up what you're taking out of choice, it like, you know, yeah, it does something for you that year, but it raises the base for the next year. Exactly okay? right. And if you're, you know, and if you if you do it, and then the number starts to go down. Yep. Now you've got sort of double damage. Right. It's okay? a great. It's a really good descriptor. Yeah. So you've got to be careful about what you do. On the other hand, you know, when the question comes, well, why, you know, why can't we cut your budget a little bit, take a little bit more out of school choice? 
that's the same trap that we have yep. to warn right. the we have to warn the town yeah, about. That, that you know that shows up too at the table. Yep, I completely agree with that. So you know, and, and at some point you basically gotta just you know do your level on as best mm -hmm. with the people, different people at the table, yep. trying to figure out okay, what can we afford, what can't we afford. Good point. Yep. There's no magic answers. Okay. You know, and, right. and you know, I keep thinking about a formula because you've had formulas for various things, but in this case, it's like you still got to just figure sure. out how do we apply common sense to this to come up with, you know, what we can afford, what we can't afford, yeah. you know, what makes sense, what don't make sense. And I don't have the, I don't, I haven't come up with a way of just making it automatic. And that's what, you know, maybe is, you know, I stop by here a few more times, we can, we can make some progress to get into that. Because I don't, you know, maybe that is possible. I'm just not sure, you know, what, what that those are. Be. To, to, to the larger budget discussion, and my God, it's, like I said, July 15th, but just close our books and we'll talk about that. Oh, I, got, it, it, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm so tired from the I last don't wanna, one. <laughs> I don't want to give you guys a long break. You it's know. all right. Just forget exactly about right. Stuff. The whole, we'll uh, forget but, about but, it. But, you know, sure. the, the notion, the notion, not the notion, the reality that uh, the new uh, elementary school baseline budget is substantially reset and is on the tax rate. Again, thanks to the both. Thanks to the voters. Town meeting and the voters. Right. That said, uh, now it's both this kind of forecasting, which was, which, which, thank you for this. We started tonight, uh, and then the discipline in and around. Well, what, you know, what box? What, how can we compartmentalize the uses of either choice or recurring revenue stream? What does an ideal efficiency look like? What all those kinds of budget stuffs? Which I, I don't actually start now because it's July, but you know, I, I do value that. And we got the other thing that, that's going to be going on is we have a new business manager right. on board. She started uh, part of last month. She's working, she's on board completely now, and she's overlapping a month plus a little bit with the, the oh, Judy and, oh, good. and her team. Yeah. Um, and uh, Judy and her team are on through, uh, the, by contract, through the end of July, but you know, basically their task is close the books. Yeah. Okay, which wasn't, hmm. you know, that was a problem last year with, uh, you know, the change from Patty and so on. And yep. it, was a, it was a real struggle to get the books closed. Yeah. And, um, you know, having a good overlap here with Shelley hmm. coming in. And, and, and Shelley, by the way, is a Sunderland resident. Yep. So, you know, hopefully this won't be a strange place to, her, uh, to come occasionally and, and, and fill you guys in on you know, what's going on. There's one so, more question, David. Oh, yeah. huh? So, so, um, we're about we're have the auditors shown up yet they're almost yes, here. Been here they're here okay so i'm curious from an administration's point of view for the district because we know it's the district and union 38 and a, a mishmash thereof by charter uh is there uh an annual or biannual or triannual uh review from uh the accountants we're, we're closed out we we do we do of course the, the full survey and have accounting services. And that seems to be something that catches. I think an impression I have with the contracted service for financial services at the at the district over the last year was, oh my God. And it wasn't all shock and awe. It was, no, this is a practice, that's a practice, this is a real number, that's a real number, these are real dates. So how do we go, and I would push this maybe forward through uh, Darius, as well as the committee, so how do we go about that audit function and closer to a real time? And I understand October with choice, but there's a lot of accounts that go on, and we are, you know, we're... I, I don't know enough about yeah. the procedures over there to give you a, anything like a complete answer. Sure. I, the only thing I would pass on is I know that when we were placing Patty with the managed services yep. outfit. Yep. Um, I asked at a joint meeting over there, uh, I said that it's practice in Sunderland if you change the people you know, who are Forensic part of the numbers, that right. you have an audit. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the answer I got, which I did not follow up on, mm -hmm. uh, I obviously should have, was um, because this is essentially at the end of a year, Okay, we don't need a separate audit for mm -hmm. it. It would be picked up in our normal auditing procedures. Okay. But I don't know what the normal auditing sure. procedures are. I don't right. know if they're in every year or in every second or third year or, right. or what the schedule is, okay, or, 
you know, what the criteria are or something like that. I just know that, you know, I was, you know, the, the message was, yeah, we sort of got that covered because it's, you know, taking, she's closing out the one set of books and then that'll right. get audited and then, you know, starting up another set of books. Right. That makes good sense. Uh, but I can't guarantee as to what the frequency of an audit would be. Okay. We just did mm -hmm. the same thing with our change of guard with yep. um, Heather and Susan. I know there's so stuff. Tied it in with our regular audit. Makes perfect sense. And again, it echoes what Peter's point was. Whenever there's a change in the financial team, the town of Sunderland has an audit with, within that change. And if the appointment schedule happens uh, within the July annual, we put, add that to an area of focus for the auditors. It's like, so let's just make sure that you know the inputs and the outputs of the um, financials of the town are, are reviewed by a third party. And I think that's, that's an important piece. Um, Interesting. David, I didn't mean to hug that piece. No, that's okay. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Jessica, you want to add anything? No, I'm just here. Um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything else on that. Well, well whatever. I'll check on that. Okay. And there's, and as you were saying, Peter, there's overlap. Obviously, you got a financial, you got a, a, a new, a new fiscal manager, and, and that that business sorry, business manager is going to work with the current process. Right, and I mean, this Darius seemed, you know, I was talking to him a bunch last just a week ago, yeah. and um, he seemed uh, very pleased with how the turnover was progressing at Good. that point. Good. Okay, in terms of, you know, not only getting the books closed out, but also in uh, Shelley getting mm -hmm. uh, the kinds of things she was doing right off the right. bat that struck him as good things. So, right. so I would I would just uh, uh, share with you, talking with Sherry over the last, well, today and later earlier last week about the uh, closing here in, in town. Uh, we were able to, today's the 15th, and this is it, statutorily we're done. The exception was allowed for uh, the towns to have a little bit more uh, freedom from July 1, which is our, our, our new beginning of new budget cycle, to July 15, to move inside of our accounts. Uh, we do not have to uh, go to a special town meeting for any particular revenue sources, but uh, our efforts in changing two positions in insurance enrollment for health insurance are, are consumed. We got those two people. We got those th that two the two plans. So they're they're in place to the tune of about eighty something thousand dollars, uh, and the rest of the inside the lines. It's a trustees note. Inside the lines shifting uh, has been done. So Sunderland's books are effectively closed. Uh, we are within the projections that was presented at town meeting. Not unlike the elementary school or the district, you know, we have our own inputs and outputs, the 70s and the 90s, meaning the chapters. We have no idea with respect to the annual budget. We're spinning the wheel every single day from the state, hoping those aid numbers are spot on uh, that we had uh, been conservative about, but use of uh, available reserve revenues, the budget right now is officially in play. So whatever we can do to be honest and, and respectful about that to what the, the town had voted is really, really important, which means, you know, don't buy a new fire truck chief. Not yet, if you're watching. Uh, and let's... It's sort of nice to actually find out that you can go on the state website yep. and find out. There. <laughs> I mean, I found out, here's the funny thing. I was waiting, there's a, there's a, there's a um, was there a background check, Peter? No. <laughs> there, you know, the, the Department of Education, okay, are the ones that I, you know, I was, they were, I was checking various spots on their website, yep. and, and I found one place that was very useful because it showed, uh, you know, what was, uh, it was their rendition of what was going into each town's bank account every month yep. throughout the year. Oh, nice. Basically, all the items on the cherry sheet, which yep. included... Uh, school choice in and out, but yep. also a bunch of other stuff. Yep. Okay. And it was posted up through the end of May. Yep. And so I'm waiting for June, to, you know, and I'm waiting to, okay, <laughs> end of June, and if I could get to about uh, the 3rd or 4th or 5th of July or someplace in there, or maybe even the 2nd of July, maybe mm -hmm. the 1st of July, something. I send an email to the guy that's, you know, I get, there's an email contact, so I send, hey, what are you going to post the June numbers? And he said, we're hoping to get to it today. I think this was, uh, 
like whatever, it must have been the 2nd of July or mm -hmm. something like that. And I said, great, I says, you know, I'm just, I'm interested in the school of choice numbers for the town of Sunland, but you know, if you could do it, he said, I'm hoping to get to it by the end of the day, and it's a Monday. By the following Monday, still nothing. And I sent him another email, okay, you know, please, whatever, and he sends back, he says, you know, we're such a, he says, we're really understaffed here. He yeah. says, we're having trouble getting, you know, we got so much stuff to do. He says, yeah. but, he says, you realize, if you go to the state treasurer's website, they got a thing there that you can look at, there will be a PDF that shows each town's monthly cash disbursements. Yep. Like, oh, there, and there's a PDF about, you know, yeah. Yeah. Zillion <laughs> scrolls long, but I dip down to Sunderland, and there it is, and there are my two numbers. I say, yep, they're exactly what this spreadsheet I showed you. Mm -hmm. Said that would it be meaning the school choice charge was suddenly that month was up by thirty thousand, but the school choice income yep. was up by sixty thousand. I said, mm -hmm. "Yep, the numbers are good." That's perfect. Okay. So now it's sort of like, "Well, I'm just going to stop there every month." Yeah, right. Sure right. The numbers <laughs> are what they're supposed to be. Along those lines, we've been a bit of a nudge around the DLS website for the kind of updates. Yeah. Both Sherry's very good at it, I'm very good at it, yeah. and, you know, the accountant and staff is very good at it. It's like, ah, to the, to the extent you actually talk to, you know, it used to be Sean Cronin or those people, they are, you know, we see, we, we are removed by several degrees from that, that electronic format, and you drill down in that office and goes, there's that many people in that office. And they're doing it for the entire Commonwealth, or that many people in that office, right. and they're doing it for the entire Commonwealth. Or as an electrician, as a licensure, and you want to go to the board, there are that many people in that office for everybody in the Commonwealth. And you go, really? So, yeah. It is nice when you find out where something is. Right. To be able to go and just look it up right. without bothering anybody. Exactly right. A certain amount of satisfaction. It's really in nice. Right. Yeah, it's pretty um, remarkable. So anyway, so that's that's pretty much it in terms of what I want to say about that. There, I, I got two other things sure. on the sheet that I just, you know, one I sent you actually on Friday. We got sent a, a, a note from Darius saying yep. how we, uh, the the Grant. we got a, uh, what's called a Safer Schools and Communities Local Equipment and Technology Grant for thirty five thousand for the elementary school here in town, uh, basically for making the school safer. And um, they got uh, uh, Deerfield and Conway and Frontier mm -hmm. also got grants. Uh, Waitley supposed to, but it wasn't on the list, initial list. But we actually got the biggest number of all of them, which is sort of nice. Mm -hmm. And it was clear in, uh, uh, in both the, the wording of the grant, but also the, the note that Darius sent out was that this was a joint effort between uh, the various schools and the police and fire departments right. in the town yeah, to, um, you know, to, 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 to make the application and to qualify this stuff and to work out, uh, you know, work things out for the benefit of all. And I know that the last grant we got uh, was joint between the police and uh, the elementary school, right. and it was for twenty thousand dollars. And that was, I mean, there was just really good communication between uh, the police department and you know, chief leadership on that and, and the school and um, that's just nice to see because that's that's the way the town ought to work and it's nice right. to see it actually working that way and the police here do a lot of stuff over at the school uh, you can call it community policing yep. or whatever you want but it's again the kind of stuff they ought to be doing so um, that visibility piece by it. itself yeah you know yep. making a citadel to keep it community is is a mixed <laughs> blessing yeah. having uh, a, an active community with an active public safety component and then putting forward a, a solid grant round, one that is not just making it a citadel. Right. And so, being granted is good stuff. Yeah, so I think I'm real pleased with, with, with that whole operation. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then uh, the third thing I had here was, um, I got a, we've got this uh, you know, ADA grant application coming up and uh, Obviously, it affects all the buildings in town, plus our sidewalks, plus our some of our procedures, and so on. And there's going to be, you know, what we got on the list from that report is a whole lot bigger than you know what it <laughs> is going to cover. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I got a note from Sherry today about possibly having a meeting of the capital planning committee next, next Monday. Next Monday. Yep. And I mainly I want to be able to give the school administration heads up on because I'm assuming you're going to ask for what's your priority list. Sure. Okay, what's your priority list along with, you know, supporting documentation for the stuff that's on the list? And 
you know, maybe some sort of uh, estimates in terms of the cost involved in this right. stuff. And so, you know, I'm just, I've already told them it's got to be pretty soon because right. if the grants do by, do, if the applications do in by the 1st of October, you hit know, those priorities. We can't, we can't be looking at that stuff the last week of September or right. not, not looking at it until the last week of September. That's a great so, point. Um, I just wanted to ask about whether you got any sense of uh, a, a schedule on that and um, also wondering, you know, in terms of when they need to have stuff mm -hmm. to the committee and also, uh, you know, what sort of process uh, you might be envisioning as far as, you know, would it include, for example, a tour of uh, the, the, some of the places because, you know, if they're major items, it's like, you know, let's go have a look at the thing. Right. Makes good sense. Might, might make sense in terms of just trying to set up committee meetings and or, you know, with or without the other selectmen and so on because, you know, this is coming up pretty quickly. Right. And it's serious money and, according to Sherry, it seems like they're really sort of happy to, you know, they want us to apply and they want to give us some money because yeah. we haven't, you know, gotten any from this source before. Sure. They encouraged us to apply. Oh, yeah. Encouraged us. So we're, yeah. we're, not, we're, not, we're not on a waiting list or anything like that. No, it's like, just really get on there. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a, a reward for planning, you know. Yeah. So to your, to your question, Peter, the Monday meeting is a capital planning committee meeting, and the goal there is going to be able to integrate the ADA report that we got from the COG and also uh, the list that was part of Frontier and Union 38 capital bit into our buildings right. plan so that's going to be the, the focus of, of that meeting there the ada obviously would be a focus in particular with availability of grant rounding right. and so i expect we'll have an output it's july we'll have an output going into september say again i didn't catch the last part i expect we'll have an output a recommendation out of that meeting going into september but it, see, it strikes me for example that if i was to look at the roy brown report for priorities right. for the elementary school yep uh, and I was, and, and I don't believe the Frontier report that you, you talked about, that really dealt with just Frontier. Yeah, there was Frontier, there was a second tier in there around the remaining schools, but that was not, it was, it was tertiary to what went right. on for their ask. Right. But, but if I look at, you know, just to pull up something that I, I, I would guess that the school is going to want to have on this list, mm -hmm. which, and it was in the, ADA report that right. we've done very clearly, which was, um, you know, there's a, obviously it's long term because it couldn't get done short term, uh, plan to try and get a proper early childhood playground over at the school. Yep. And one of the uh, things that's holding back to it, the afternoon, basically before you do much else, is have a surface that you can put this thing together on that is an accessible surface. And right. that's not, you know, it's not bark mulch, it's not pea stone, it's, you know, it's something that's got to be, apparently got to be poured on there, and it's expensive, and so, you know, this has certainly been talked about, like, okay, you know, we can't get that until we get the ADA report, and then we apply for a grant, and then we get that, and then we can start moving forward on really, you know, both raising money and figuring out, you know, how to get community involvement and all this stuff to try and, you know, make that a reality. It, so that I would say that, you know, I'd be surprised if the school at this point didn't come forward and say, you know, that'd be right up there on the list of priority. I mean, it'd mm -hmm. be a good size number, but it'd be right up there at the top of our list of priorities. Uh, could we want to make sure it's on there somehow, mm -hmm. uh, even though that may not at all be the case in, in terms of the Roy Brown report? It's interesting you say it because, you know, prioritization of um, projects or prioritization of um, categories sometimes can be emotional right you, you, you might you might have something that's as simple as door widths or bathroom partitions or turning radiuses or something else but it's not a swing set for the, the the preschool right and the preschool represents what part of the community in total and prioritization is something that oftentimes you look at it in total and go mmm I get it but Mm, that's that's where the that's where the, the the meat of the matter is, or this is what we can apply for, or this is large scale, or this is not, or this is low hanging fruit, and that prioritization process from a, any community, whether it's school or library or whatever town, is something that you go, got it, right? I understand. So this this uh, using the 
Riverside Park analogy, you know, that wasn't a priority on anyone's list other than accessibility and expansion of parks, and that was 12 years ago. Nowhere was it on a list. There's still other priorities on the list. That would happen to move up because of the sense of community and it's, it's a little bit of a you know, shiny object. So right. it, I think it's important to bear that in mind as you look at a list. Sometimes the, 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 the down and dirty stuff is not shiny and really is a higher priority. But right, but that's part of like, you know, the people that are on the committee. Yeah, yeah. oh, I agree. Yeah, and yeah. So on, you know, are the ones that need to be able to say, yep. okay, I realize that this, you know, you got this nice little bubble right. here that you'd all like, but yeah. this is stuff that got to be right. fixed. Right, and I, I, I'll point to another wonderful community member in the room and talk about a, a, a roof by two doors that way. That was a slightly different priority than ADA bathroom because that roof was much more important in many ways on that building, right. in that context, right. in that fashion, in that historic sense. There's still not an 88 bathroom in that space. But now, I mean, when we, when you got, the evening you had the, the woman from- The from clock, here, yeah, she was great. Right, and I great was report here, too. Okay. I was here and um, we had a school committee meeting the next night. Mm -hmm. and so I took the copy that, yep. that I'd taken from here and we probably spent 15, 20 minutes talking about it at the school committee oh, good. and uh, you know, looking at the various things and so on and then basically telling the administration to, that they needed to get to work to come up with a plan for Smart. stuff at the school. Yep. Okay, and at the next meeting we told them the same thing. Yep. Okay, and I would, you know, so because I think that's, that needs to be part of the input, as well as from the engineer going there and looking at saying what the needs are, versus even the ADA expert going and looking at the things because right. you know there ought to be impact from input, you know, from the people running the school as to what's most important to us. Great point. That goes you're circling back. We're talking the same piece about prioritization. You know, right. where is it? What makes the most sense? Right. So I want to go back to them after this meeting and say. Or I want to su um, suggest that our, you know, the meeting next Monday, mm -hmm. which is, you know, we need to we need to be listening to that input. Yep. Okay, and that's why I say also maybe taking a tour because, you know, like you say, I mean, for everybody's got their own sense of priorities. You know, right. we're just trying to figure out together, you know, what we should be doing. Great and point. sometimes a sense of priority is impacted by. You know, some of the stuff on that plan, whether we do it, uh, you know, coming 12 months or mm -hmm. three or four years from now, won't matter a whole lot mm -hmm. because nothing else depends upon it. Right. Whereas if you've got something that you do that then allows you to make progress, you know, on a bunch more stuff, like for example, in this case I mentioned with the playground, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't go forward until we deal with that. We have trouble raising the money just for sure. a slab, basically a soft slab. Soft slab. Mm. Okay, and um, you know, I'm just saying that's a possible, you know, reasonable argument for why that ought to be on the list because sure. it affects a bunch of other stuff that then gets community involvement and other donations and so on. But you sort of need that to get going forward. Great point. Just tossing it out. Yeah. So you know, I'm playing. I'll go back and and tell them. You know, I mean. I can argue, make the same argument at the committee or something like that, that just right. we ought to be hearing what they got to say. Exactly right. What I liked about that ADA report and people who can go back to FCAT, because FCAT does a great job for us, and take a look at that report. I'm sorry, take a look at that video of that meeting, and there's a synopsis of the report uh, from the COG about our ADA, our compliance, and our opportunities. And it was, it was, it was good for me uh, it was good for me, and I'll speak as one member of the board, to hear that many of the kind of the physical elements we're in, air quotes, pretty good shape with. And so many of the other elements are both administrative and are accessibility through websites or policy before you get into, you know, blowing open doorways and all that other stuff. So. I think that's that's a good that's a good view for people to go back and kind of who may be interested in this to look back at that meeting and go aha and that report's available here as well. So, and there's certainly, like you say, there's basically 
I think she, I think she pointed out too. There was a lot of stuff that be, could could be accomplished without. It wasn't going to cost you much. Yeah. Right. 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 Procedural okay. changes or whatever. And, oh, a lot of your communications procedures and all that sort yep. of stuff yep. was a matter of just you know investing in your training and exactly right or your website or whatever it was. That, you know, it's just a matter of doing it rather than a matter of having to go out and raise a bunch of money. Great point. There is clearly capital that's called out in that, and that's a, a, a priority for the town as we get these reports in. And it's it's always a, a function of continuous improvement. And sometimes it's capital. Sometimes it's how you how you deal with things. Sometimes it's the reporting function. Sometimes it's you know it's complicated. We had a sept overview a, a week ago, hmm. and that was one where frankly we could have dusted off the old sept report, but that's okay. You know, there's a lot of people who worked on this Sunderland emergency preparedness team about what to do, mass communications, flooding, wind damage, et cetera, et cetera. How do you go about those things? And that's something that we're back at all over again because, you know, governance, not politics, governance is dynamic. It changes, the population changes, the needs change, but you still got to be able to fall back on it. So, great. Thanks, Peter. Or anything? I, School? I, 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 whatever. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, see, I'll see you Monday. I'll see you there Monday you anyway. Go. But, um, you know, keep the communication open. And if you guys, you know, if there's something we're not right. providing, right. say so. Good. Well, if you've got a, if you have a, your, your next school committee meeting at the elementary. We don't have another meeting until September unless we schedule a special. Got it. Yeah. So I would suggest that we'll, we'll send a correspondence from, from the town office. Uh, recognizing that you know our books are closed the transfer piece is complete and we landed where we had projected with maybe a little bit of erosion on the free cash because primarily of health insurance enrollment but that's always a bit of noise it's it's a it's an accordion it, you know it's enrollment like doesn't happen choice. you're kind of okay enrollment happens you're you're still okay but it's not yeah. not where you thought you might be great thanks so much Peter and Jessica appreciate that okay all right uh, select board updates. David? Uh, the only thing I have right now is we're waiting for some dates for our negotiations for the next step, so for Union 38 teachers. So Mediation? Yes. Got it. So waiting here so, on that. So date certain, right? Dates TBA. TBD, yep. Okay. So great. Okay. So uh, Sherry, you want to weigh in before we start talking about uh, draft town center committee charge with uh, town administrator updates? Uh, just a couple of the school street uh, manhole construction There's equipment project. out there. But it yeah. moved, from, uh, moved from there to <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, different contractors. Different contractors. Um, Thanks so, so much. They're going to saw cut the road on Wednesday. Yep. The construction will be on uh, Thursday and cleanup will be on Friday. I'm told that residents and businesses should not experience any, any um, interruption of service. Right. They have a pumping machine or something that bypasses all of that. So this is the sewer, uh, essentially manway that we're that's being put in on this branch, yep. and that's part of the school street project, and that has to do with a lateral tie out to the properties on one sixteen. Correct. Right. Got it. So no interruption business. Correct. Yes, yeah, business and residential. Yeah. They must have a pretty good sized trash pump. Good for them. Yep. Yeah. So and the, <laughs> uh, the engineer signed off on on the approach. Correct. And. <clears throat> Most of that stuff is precast. You're digging a big hole. You're gonna, you know, putting in new fittings. You're gonna put in. You're gonna cut in three pipes that should go together a different way, right? Yeah. You're gonna put something in there they need to land on. Will Rich be involved in the final placement, or is it we're gonna rely on the consulting engineer? The consulting engineer, okay. but Rich has been involved. Yeah, he's okay. watching. Great. Any other crazy grants you want to grant us? <laughs> No. No. It's like every other week it. you get a grant this past year. It's been a hell of a run. I know. It's been <laughs> great. It really has. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, draft town center committee charge. Lauren, you were involved in this. We had, we have version one, two, and three in front of us. And it looked like it was a straw man, actually. It looks like we are incorporating uh, the first draft calling out a town center committee, and then there was a combination of uh, membership and kind of charge, review, and asset. And, 
I'm, I have one, two, and you three, three in front of them here. <laughs> so the last one we have is from you and uh, Liz. Yep. And so it looks like parts of one, and, and so one from our office, one from a pathway committee's member, and then uh, yours are, or not yours, but the third draft are integrated into the third draft. And so in that uh, primary bullets here, not a permanent committee, rather one completion of a series of tasks, 2023, totally get it. So a uh, consultant with town vision, uh, town center visioning process and uh, road safety piece, 11647 piece, uh, main streets and rehabs are consistent with whatever comes out of the visioning process. And then infrastructure or bylaws makes perfect sense. Town meeting kind of involvement. Uh, working group for complete streets, mass work, school ADA improvements. And then reach out to citizens, businesses. Is there anything you think that we're missing in that totality of that charge and Secondarily, is that charge uh, narrow or broader than it needs to be? What do you think? I'm just wondering, do we need a, like a geographical limit to the extent of, do we need to explicitly state that That's at fair. all? So you're talking about the area. Yeah. You know, this, this here goes, the charge in front of us, um, and three charges, once, twice, three. The three charges in front of us uh, uh, continue to narrow as you go from one to two to three. And it can be argued that they're also broadening because it includes in, in, in the third version uh, inclusion of town meeting functions, which makes perfect sense. Uh, and then complete streets, mass works, kind of liaison, that makes perfect sense. And then consultation for uh, a town center visioning process. And again, that makes sense as well. I think the, the bullets, David, if you go through uh, character and, and amenities, mm -hmm. that's a big broad brush, right? Yep. Uh, pedestrian access, bicycle access, vehicular access, zoning, that makes perfect sense. Um, and, and I think like those, that's where you'll see like complete streets kind of kick in for that because those are the things mm -hmm. that you want to you use complete streets to address. When yeah, that's fair. But. So we've run into the tension. There's an inherent tension between dealing with state and, and local uh, flavor and textures, right? No. And we see that with the North Main Street project, a little bit with the complete streets projects. We see that with sidewalks. Uh, something as simple as a sidewalk can take Nine months. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> yep. A sidewalk simple. extension could take nine months, even though it's public property or yep. a combination of public private. Um, now, the charge in front of this, in, in front of us now as a draft, encompasses those, um, the trappings of not having a voice at a table. And I think that probably is what I'm seeing in some of this. Hmm. Uh, reason to have the committee yeah. is to take a step back before we, you know, feeling like we maybe learned a lesson from the North Main Street and, you know, knowing that we have other things going on and that we're considering, you know, talking with DOT about a roundabout, which I think is, you know, people seem to have mixed feelings about. We've never seen anything about how, what that would look like. I think it's an opportunity to take a step back mm -hmm. and say, what do we want? How all these things fit into it, because otherwise we may have, you know, a great highway interchange but no town. Sure. Um, you know, we. You know, it's kind of how we got what we have now. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think if we want to drive some of these decisions, then we have to have thought about it and see how everything fits into one vision. 
rather than just sort of taking the money when it comes and doing it this year. Sure. So, Lauren, with respect to lessons from North Main Street, I'm curious. Maybe it's, maybe it's a sidebar discussion, but you know, the the grand scheme of things with respect to North Main Street, the way it's currently laid out, you know, the road ended up getting wider, yeah. the sidewalks ended up getting wider. They're in a slightly different position. We went through collectively eighty six or eighty nine thousand dollars worth of change orders from the engineer to get back to where we started from. Mm. So I, I'm curious about what lesson. I think mean, it's a different discussion, but you know what lesson came out of that? We ended up with the basics of what we had actually originally asked for. So, with respect to the center, it's important to bear in mind state road, state road, state intersection. But we want to see it at the table. I think that's a really important piece right. that comes out of that, out of this piece as well. Right. I think that we have yeah. an interest beyond the flow of traffic. Yep, yep, absolutely right. We were talking earlier, I think David and I were parking lot or maybe in the, in, the, in the office downstairs about the inherent tension between standard design from one office, I'll use this office, yeah. right? <laughs> and the standard design from that office. Yeah. The, the, same, the same that giveth, taketh away. So you, the same uh, complete streets grant can come from the DOT and then the DOT floor number three says but we want that intersection right it's like well wait a minute you cars too what? faster what? where is where is where is there some synergy there uh and that may be one of the lessons that comes out of the north main street piece right it's complete but it's not but it's slower there's a town village or a town center and but you're making it faster well, how do we fix that well and it, it is important because i'm sure people will have opinions on on everything including traffic and things like that yeah. you know It'd be nice to have less traffic. <clears throat> right, It'd be nice if you're to like, not wait and take a yeah. left. Well, right. I guarantee you, if you were doing a complete <coughs> project in no on Nantucket, <coughs> yeah. it would not be forcing a standard project that sure. didn't have a lot of other right. uh, sections. Sure. I remember distinctly a McDonald's being built on the mountain road in Stowe. They're like, mm. sure, but it's going to look like this. Right. <laughs> It's now a sushi joint. There will be anyway. no 60 foot mm -hmm. right. golden arches. Right. Interesting. Okay, so we've got these three charges in front of us. We have, we have I don't want to call it three charges. There's a straw man that started mm -hmm. and was revised and is currently revised. And David, you see anything that jumps out like, like to the no? I mean, so amenities, fine, I get it. I understand that. That's important to bear in mind. Zoning, I completely understand that. That makes perfect sense as well. The I, my question with the consultant would be: Do you vi was the idea that we would be using the consultant as a facilitator more so? Um, I think than than Sherry an article about some project that had happened in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think this is an unusual kind of. Uh, I don't know if it's a landscape architect yeah. or a landscape symbol kind of. Uh, Outfit that was that was that the Pulaski piece? No, what was it? Sure, it was something in Florence, I think. So the, the Pulaski piece got a I'll ton send it to of you. input. The and Pulaski up, Park. Yeah, ended up being ended up being kind of like, well, let's put this in with some. Anyway, it was it was a combination of landscape and, and I civil. Think this was more of a downtown. Got it. I, I think the end result of that was very good. Though. The end result's very good. I think that's Aspect. the goal in all of this. Right. You know, if you have civic and community engagement, the goal is to have the best possible outcome. Right. And hopefully, actually, if it's done right, actually save time in the long run because we won't be moving forwards, then coming back, and then good moving forward. You know, we don't go through fits and starts. Yep. Good point. <clears throat> I guess that was, I was just curious what role the consultant I was going to play. More like what we did on 120 North Main, where right. we had someone come in and help us see what the options were. Yep, it's a great point. And that outcome, I have to, I have to tie to that, and the Selectman's updates, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I totally forgot that. So we, maybe we just. Hmm. I'm wondering, so maybe. I, mean, I think it's dependent on having the grant money that right. there are other sources yeah. of funding. Uh, but I think it's having someone on the outside come in not just facilitate, but actually produce drawings. And, I mean, you can't tell people I'm thinking about having, we're thinking about having a roundabout without being able to show people, mm -hmm. here's what a roundabout would look 
like, here's what it right. would do, this is what the center of town would feel like, you know, versus what else could we do to the interest, sure. what are the options, um, what's the impact, you know, otherwise people, you're making an uninformed decision. Sure. So uh, with that piece about roundabout, I think it's important to bear in mind that the states made no decision about type of design in there. They're looking for traffic improvements, right. yeah. punchline. You know, hear roundabout people, traffic. People, and people get animated. It's like, well, actually, we haven't quite seen anything yet. Yeah. But the reality is, you know, it's not going to be the Eiffel Tower, and it might be something completely different than what we have right now, or something that looks a lot like what we have right now and is enhanced. We don't know yet, and that's what this charge is all about. Right. And being and at the say, table. Rather than wait and see what they're going to give us, let's right. figure out what we would like to have. Sure, sure, makes good sense. Okay. So Tom's not here. I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to put this charge out for a vote tonight. Yeah, I like no the, I like the back. number three draft. I think it's more inclusive. Yeah. I feel that it incorporates the best of number two. Uh, it incorporates uh, specific elements of the town center and not just an intersection. And that's important to bear in mind as well. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I, I would like to see fleshed out just a little more in the mm -hmm. final thing is let's clearly define the area that we're talking about to avoid like scope yeah, creep, and everything, you know, in that sense. Well, I think, you know, it's easy. It's the bridge. I think you're just, you have to decide how far down 116 yep. you're going. And then it's basically, you know, north and south main. Yeah, I, th I think that, like I, yeah. we should like put that just like any other piece in. You know, clearly delineate that in a bullet. Fair. Okay. Well, All it's right. an important so, topic. So. Yeah. So for our next meeting, we'll have this. We'll add some delineation language and circulate it. And uh, with that circulation, we can see how that plays into here. You know, this this is not town center focused, but seems to be exchange focused, and I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, on the subject of 120, you saw the email? Okay. The one about funding? Yes. So I think it's important as an update, and I forgive me for circling back to select board updates, but it appears that uh, RDI uh, as well as uh, FRHA, Franklin Regional Housing Authority, uh, has secured first round funding for the project uh, that is 120 North Main. Uh, that is annual rounds. We missed around the application, missed around last year while we went through some of the design changes and some of the public outreach, uh, and is a recurring round. The project didn't change substantively, and the application went in, and I'm going to give Laura Baker uh, and Glenn Olson credit for uh, both uh, patience and persistence. And that first uh, round of debt funding uh, ensures the project is not just in a queue, but it has uh, initial financing. So we can get through uh, the last stages of the permit uh, process that's in front of us, uh, then they know they have at least money to begin. And that money to begin allows for application for future bonding for the total project. Mm -hmm. So it's it's green lighting, not just the concept of senior affordable housing in the town of Sunderland. It's it's green lighting the fact that that project passed all of the muster to get there. That's a big deal. Sort of a critical path item. It's a critical path. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks. Thanks to the 120 North Main uh, Committee. Thanks a lot for of work. <laughs> 12 years. Time, yep. 12 years of work. Great yep. stuff. Okay. It feels like 12 years. It hardly <laughs> feels it, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. So next up, thank you, Lauren. Okay. So next up, we've got uh, image cast precinct optical scanner voting equipment from the town clerk who wants everyone to be retinal scanned. <laughs> No, not true. <laughs> this is a slight change. Too late. There's already it's tweets about it. Damn it. <laughs> uh, this is a change uh, in our optical scanning equipment. And we have to, um, from 
Mr. Galvin, per MGL chapter 54, section 34, uh, hereby vote the use of image cast precinct optical scan tabulator, and frankly, any vote that uses the word tabulator, I like, at all elections held in the town of Sunderland after August 1st, 2019, and further the select board votes to discontinue the use of the AccuVote tabulator, twice in the same vote, uh, as of August 1st, 2019. So we had a capital planning uh, budget element in our last town meeting that changed some of the voting uh, equipment. And the process is not gonna change dramatically, but our equipment changes. And the Russians aren't gonna be able to dial in and talk to your tabulator. It's just calculating a little differently. The Russians, that's gonna be in 2024. I kid, I kid. So what we gotta do essentially is vote to dispense with voting equipment. And it's important to bear in mind, there's no such thing in the United States of America as a national election. There's never been one. We don't have them. We've never had them. We have 50 state elections. Those values are calculated. Those values are brought forward. Anyone who thinks there's a national election, go back and read the book because there's no such thing. We're talking here about changing a simple piece of equipment. And we have to, to the state of Massachusetts credit, actually vote out a method, a calculator, and vote in a new calculator. We have to warn the Secretary of State that we're doing it. That's what states do. So, tabulator twice in a motion. What do you think? Gets my vote. <laughs> you so, have me a tabulator. I love tabulator. <laughs> so, um, there's a motion uh, on the table. I'll second to discontinue as, request, as requested by the town clerk and to include as requested by the town clerk a uh, new image cast, image cast precinct optical scan tabulator at our future elections as of August 1st. All those in favor? Aye. Two to zero, please. And I just might add for those of you who are watching, uh, it operates pretty much exactly same the thing. same way. You right. take your piece, your uh, voting card, yep. and stick it in the machine. So it, it works exactly the same way. So in case somebody's wondering, like, oh my God, are we going back to some machine that's on Windows 3.1 or right. something like that? No. <laughs> I That's would say, David, and I appreciate you talking about the mechanics of it, uh, maybe we can get the town clerk to just simply put up, or uh, work with our office to put up on the website what's actually gonna change. The ballot yeah. looks really the same, and it's a different piece of equipment. That's all it is, so we're changing yeah. that piece. I would say there are people in this town as old as me, because I'm old, and when I started voting, at the tender age of 18 in the town of Southampton, it was a beautiful walnut box with a great crank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it went click the levers and crank it. Yeah. And it only went up one time around, and that was it. Your ballot was counted. Oh. So now we're doing video tabulation. But again, the town, to their credit, and I appreciate the town clerk's efforts, as well as town meeting's efforts, to vote for this change in technology. This allows us to possibly hold elections in other locations and physical locations that are ADA accessible that don't interfere with the elementary school or whatever. Right. Okay. Uh, minutes from Tom's not here, but let's vote minutes just in case he said something we wanted recorded. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> oh my God, he said that? Really? All right. Motion on the minutes? Uh, motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero, please. Okay. Uh, sludge disposal. How much more expensive is it getting? Mm. For those people who... Wait, hold on. I think I have the pricing there from last year, just this year, but it did go uh, up. So we're 5.9 to 8.9, so basically 0.3. So... Briefly, if I could, Cherry, 
the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, who I saw actually at an event over the weekend. Uh, we talked a little bit about regional waste, and one of the interesting parts about the event is that that particular event was nearly, nearly 100% compostable. Oh, wow. Nice. It was quite interesting. Anyway, so um, Jan Amin uh, does a great job up there at the district. And for people who don't know, our sludge has to actually be hauled away and burnt. And it's the dumbest thing ever. Mm. So hopefully, as Deerfield, I'm sorry, Greenfield may be working toward a regional digesting system uh, that comes to fruition. Because it seems really useless to take something where you can get a maximum of 18% solids, put it in a tanker truck, take it to a boiler in Lowell, and burn it. So you're going to take 72% so water and put it up a smokestack. But hey, that's the way it works. People don't understand it, but that's the way it works. So we can't land incorporate at that low, those levels. We don't get solids more than 18-ish with polymers. So we might get 20, but not so much. The rest of it's water. Uh, that can't be discharged into the river, and rightly so, because we want clean water. Yep. Anyway, it costs ratepayers, not taxpayers, ratepayers, about 0 0.0035 cents per gallon. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, motion. All second. All those in favor? Aye. Two to zero. And this is an annual contract, and it's important to bear in mind where your waste streams are, what they do. Back to good governance. Okay. We have an appointment for the Historical Commission. Do, do, do. We may. Two appointments, actually. Is it Margaret? Margaret Marella? and Jessica, Jessica Skibiski. Yeah. Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. And I want to thank them for their, not just their interest, but being in the historical commission uh, is usually a point of passion. So good for them for contributing and wanting to do this. All those in favor? Aye. Two to zero, please. Okay. I want to thank the thank the, the board and the viewers for letting me get weepy about my dad's birthday. So quite all right. Any other discussion? I can think of none at the moment. I'm gonna say chocolate. Chocolate. Coffee. Dinner. You know, dinner. <laughs> right. Exactly right. Sure. Anything else to add? Uh, no, I think we're all set. Shout out to FCAT. You're all set. Our next all meeting right. is in two weeks. Our next meeting is in so two weeks. Two weeks uh, there will be a capital planning committee meeting next week, and then our next meeting is in two weeks. Okay. Oh, like 29. 29, really? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll be out of state. But Ooh. we can handle it. Okay. All right. Uh, awesome. Not hearing any of the discussion, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. We'll call us out at 744.